So not long after Jack Ruby shot Lee Harvey Oswald on camera in the basement of Dallas police headquarters, a lot of Americans started to have some questions about the Kennedy assassination. It was, you'd have to admit, a pretty extraordinary sequence of events. A lone gunman murders the president of the United States, and then, less than 48 hours later, that lone gunman is himself murdered by another lone gunman. What are the odds of that? It's one thing if you get struck by lightning, rare but possible. But if every member of your family also gets struck by lightning all on different days, you might begin to suspect these are not entirely natural events. But oh, replied the US government, they are. This bizarre chain of killings was all entirely natural. So less than a year after the JFK assassination, the Johnson White House released something called the Warren Commission Report. And the report concluded that while their motives remained unclear, both Lee Oswald and Jack Ruby had acted alone. No one helped them. There was no conspiracy of any kind. Case closed. Time to move on. And many, many Americans did move on. At the time, they had no idea how shoddy and corrupt the Warren Commission was. It would be nearly 50 years before the CIA admitted under duress that, in fact, it had withheld information from investigators about its relationship with Lee Harvey Oswald. But even then, at the time, before that was known, the government's explanation didn't seem entirely plausible, and some people started asking obvious questions about it. It was at that point, as Americans started to doubt the official story, that the term conspiracy theory entered our lexicon. As Professor Lance DeHaven Smith points out in his book on the subject, the term conspiracy theory did not exist as a phrase in everyday American conversation before 1964. In 1964, the year the Warren Commission issued its report, the New York Times published five stories in which conspiracy theory appeared. Now today, of course, the term conspiracy theory appears in pretty much every New York Times story about American politics. It's wielded, now as then, as a weapon against anyone who asks questions the government doesn't feel like answering. But despite 60 years of name calling, those questions have not disappeared. In fact, they have multiplied with time. And here's one of them. In April of 1964, a psychiatrist called Louis Joylin West visited Jack Ruby in his isolation cell in a Dallas jail. According to West's written assessment, he found that Jack Ruby was, quote, technically insane and in need of immediate psychiatric hospitalization. Those are conclusions that, puzzlingly, no one who had spoken to Jack Ruby previously had reached. Ruby had seemed perfectly sane to the people who knew him. Louis Joylin West pronounced him crazy. But what, what West did not say was that he was working for the CIA at the time. Louis Joylin West was a contract psychiatrist for the spy agency. He was also an expert on mind control and a prominent player in the now infamous MKUltra program in which the CIA gave powerful psychiatric drugs to Americans without their knowledge. 